let us begin by firstly defining what is a cubic function. A cubic function is a polynomial of a third degree of a form y equals to a x cubed plus b x squared plus c x plus d. So this is its standard form, where a will always determine the shape of this function. So if the a is less than zero, we are going to have this shape. And also, if your a is greater than zero, we are going to have this shape. Another thing, your a will never be equals to zero because once your a is equal to zero, this function will no longer be a cubic function. It will turn out to a quadratic function because the highest power or the highest exponent of that function will be two. And for a cubic function, as long as the highest exponent is three, then that's a cubic function. And as for d, it is called the y-intercept. So we, it has a name called the constant term. It is the constant term because it's the only value without x, or it is the coefficient of x to the power 0. That's why we call it the constant term. So for the y-intercept, remember, is the value of y when x equals to 0. So meaning that d is nothing but f of 0. Let's give another form for this cubic function. We have a form where we are going to use the intercepts. How? If I'm having f of x1 be the same as f of x2, which is the same as f of x3, which is the same as 0, then x1, x2, and x3 are the roots of the x-intercept. So are the values of x when y equals to 0. Then I can define my y to be a x minus x1, x minus x2, and x minus x3. This is very much important. And also, what about d? So d, it will be f of 0, the constant term. It means whenever I see x, I put 0. If I do that, I'll end up getting negative a, x1, x2, x3. That's it. So to have a clear picture, let's consider an example. Let's take a look at it first. Suppose you are given f of negative 2 equals to f of 1 equals to 0, f of 0 equals to 2, and f of negative 1 equals to 4. And you are asked to find the standard form for this cubic function. Remember, f of x is the same as ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. So we need to first solve for the value of a, b, c, and d. In order to do that, we know very much sure that d is given by negative a, x1, x2, and x3. So from the statement, we know what is d. d is the y-intercept which is given by this 2. So d equals to 2. And already we know our roots or, or our values for the x-intercept are the values of x where y equals to 0. So negative 2 and 1 are your roots. So I will treat negative 2 as my x1 and then I will treat 1 as my x2. As for x3, for now I have no idea what is it equal to, but I will find out. So from here, I will need to make x3 
the subject of the formula. So on this equation, I have negative a multiplied by negative 2 multiplied by 1, which is nothing but 2a x3 is the same as 2. And in order for me to make x3 the subject of the formula, it means I'm going to divide both sides by 2a. That's how I'll find the value of x3, which is my third root, to be given by what? 1 over a. Then I'll take this value and substitute to my function f at x, but the one that has to do with the intercept. Let's proceed. Remember, f of x can also be written in this form. Already we know one of the point of a function, which is the f of negative 1. So we don't know the value of a yet. That's what we're going to solve. Where you see x, we'll put the negative 1. And as for x1, we said it's negative 2, so this becomes plus 2. Negative 1 minus 1, since... Your x2, we agreed very much sure that it's 1. And the x3 is in form of a, where we found that 1 over a. We have negative 1 minus 1 over a. So, proceeding further, it's a matter of uh, finding the value of a. So, we know that f of negative 1 equals to 4. Then, matter of Simplifying this, I have a, open bracket, negative 1 plus 2, I have 1. Negative 1 minus 1, I have negative 2. What else do I have? It's 1, negative 1 over a minus 1. So, proceeding further, what do I have? This part, it becomes negative 2a, that negative 2a, I'm going to multiply by negative 1 over a. What do I find? I'm going to find 2. Then I'll take the same negative 2a and multiply by negative 1. I'll find plus 2a. I'll be just distributing this over this. From here, then I can be able to solve for the value of a. How do I find it? Uh, by just uh, introducing the additive inverse of 2, uh, which is minus 2, just adding the minus 2 both sides. So what am I left with? I have 2a equals to 4 minus 2 which is nothing but 2. So from here, I can divide by 2 both sides so I can find the value of a. So if I do so, I have a equals to 2 over 2, which is nothing but 1. So I have the value of a. I'll have to find the other values. So I'll take this and go back and substitute in this original equation. Going back to our original function, the one that has to do with the x-intercept, since we know the value of a, we'll substitute uh, its 1, so it's either I can write 1 or don't write 1. Since here, so I have x minus x1. x1, remember, is negative 2. This becomes plus 2. Then x minus 1. I also have x minus 1 over 1 because i already found what is the value of a remember this part it was x minus 1 over a so proceeding further i can see very much sure that this it turns out to this equation x plus 2 multiplies x minus 1 to the power 
2. So it's a repeated factor equation. So in this situation, x equals to 1, it is the critical value. It's also my root. So we'll talk about critical value or the next video you'll understand. So this is the repeated factor. So in this situation, I'll just have to simplify this to its standard form. So to do so, I'll first start with this repeated factor x minus 1 squared, which is nothing but x squared minus 2x plus 1. Then I apply the full method. If I do so, it's x multiplied by x. What do I have? x squared x multiplied by negative 2x is minus 2x squared. And x multiplied by 1 is plus x. Then 2 multiplied by x squared is plus 2x squared. 2 multiplied by negative 2x is negative 4x. And 2 multiplied by 1 is what? It's 2. So a matter of taking the like terms is 2 like terms. As I can see, negative 2x squared is going to get rid of 2x squared. Then I only have the x squared term. As for x minus 4x, it becomes negative 3x. So my standard form equation for this cubic function will be x cubed minus 3x plus 2. So I was able to find the value of a, b, c, and d. So looking at the standard form, it is clear we calculated the value of a. Let me just write it aside here so you can see. The value of a, we said it's 1. What about the value of b? The value of b, since we don't have x squared here, it means it's 0. And the value of c is nothing but negative 3. And lastly, the value of d, which is the constant term, is 2. That's how we approach it. Thank you. I appreciate uh, your support. Please like the video, leave your comment, and subscribe. We'll continue next time, and God bless you.